Hello everybody and welcome to this, I guess, episode of the McCarthy Chronicles. A friend of mine showed this to me. I'm not sure if he even remembers because he was on NyQuil when he showed it to me, but he did. So, let's see what this is all about. As I hung by my neck, gently swinging side to side in the darkened room, I couldn't help but feel that my life had been something of a farce up to this point. An endless parade of nonsensical events marching past me, taunting me to just give a damn. When you're strung up by a man you shot between the eyes with a 38 revolver not five minutes earlier, you begin to wonder if there really is any reality to accompany the poetry. As my vision began to fade and euphoria washed over my body from lack of oxygen to my brain, all I could think about was how I got here, and not how I could get out. When you start your day still in your clothes from the night before, being jerked awake by a blend of nightmares and the phone ringing on your desk, things are never immediately clear. The line between the dream and the cold light of day is blurred somewhat by the incessance of the telephone. <sighs> Coffee. I had not a case in weeks. The headlines after my previous job sort of out. Where are you? The young woman on the end of the line sounded breathy and seductive. And just a little terrified. I'll be twenty minutes. He'd asked to meet me in a small church across town. I knew the place. Been abandoned for quite a while. The gang activity in the area was maybe too much for the preacher. <laughs> I guess even God can be convinced with a kind word and a blood-stained baseball bat. I arrived with all the bravado of a comic book hero, and none of the talent. She was dead when I got there. Crimson fluid snaked around the altar to which she was tied, glimmering in the moonlight. Still warm. No wonder she was terrified. Shit! I couldn't be found in a church with a still warm corpse. I had to get out of there. Tattered matchbox. Pick it up. Okay, fine. Don't pick it up. Whoa. Was he away? Yes, that's McCarthy. And this is a dead girl, even though it looks like a man. Okay, can't do anything. That's a bloody symbol. Broken window. Can we jump out the broken window? McCarthy, jump out of the broken window. Please pick that up. No. I can't leave that way. The cops will say. Okay, but you won't go out the window, so what am I to do? Okay, so I'm apparently supposed to hold it down to investigate it. Oh, talk to Tather. <laughs> Look. An old matchbook. How beautifully cliche. I don't see how. Okay. Talk to dead girl. Whoa. She's recently become the silent type. Clearly. Clearly, guy. She looks young. Seventeen, maybe. It smells like gasoline. I hope they weren't planning what I think they were. Well, what do you think they were planning? I haven't seen anything like this before. Let's hope I don't ever again. <laughs> okay. Someone scratched something into here. Valui ad Satanum invocandum. I succeeded in summoning Satan. Guy, how do you even know that? Seriously. Anyway. Seems like a good way out. Can't reach it though. But what? Tell me you're joking. Can I 
Nope. Okay. Not that. Not the scratches. So that means that we need to... Okay. It's still wet. Ah, uh, guy, I don't want The to moonlight it. sparkled on the recently spilled blood like tiny crimson dancers. Guy, as poetic as that is. A coward. Okay, no. Yeah, seriously. Talk to yourself. Okay, apparently not. It doesn't answer me. <laughs> I wasn't being serious, guy. Okay, uh, hmm. Seems like a good way out. Can't reach it, though. Guy, just break the rest of the window. Can we? Okay, you know what? Fine. We shall shoot. The window. How about that, that doesn't seem to work. Uh, yeah. Of course it doesn't. It doesn't answer me. <laughs> An old matchbook. How beautifully cliche. Guy, you're just looking at stuff. Action, please. Action. Let's see. No. Okay. It doesn't look like it's supporting her in any way. Maybe they used it just to get her up there. Okay. Can you... It doesn't answer me. Ah, <sighs> <sighs> guy. Guy, guy, guy. We must have words. Strong words. Like, in reference to how to get out the window. We... How are we stuck already? It's still wet. Blood is stickier than you might think. Oh, wait, we could pick him up. An old matchbook. No. How beautifully cliche. No, not look, guy. Okay. It's from the Grosvenor Hotel. Sounds like a good next stop. Okay. That works. Can't reach it. <laughs> Okay. I need to take a look at this hotel. <sighs> okay, now we've got somewhere. Okay. The Grosvenor Hotel hadn't been accepting guests for years. It was part of a huge estate just outside the city. It used to be a manor house before it was a hotel. I guess the uptake of a big house like that isn't cheap. I pulled up the driveway to be greeted by nothing more than a sense of foreboding, smelling damp. All right. I My car. It's not much, but it works. Okay. Good for you. So, uh, let's use it's the. It's too far to walk anyway. What? What the? Okay. Uh, we'll use the car. I need to concentrate on other things. Okay. That's apparently not it. Can we use this road? It's too far to walk anywhere. Guy, why are you showing me roads when you're not feeling like walking anywhere? Okay, gravel driveway. That works. No. Oh. Never know when you might need some worthless stone chippings. Okay. A disheveled gravel driveway. Okay. Can we use I need road? to concentrate on other things. What other things, Guy? What other things? Can we please use the It's road? too far to walk anywhere from here. Uh, guy, you're killing me. You're really killing me here. What are we supposed to do? Can we use this? That doesn't seem to work. Of course not. What are we doing wrong? Talk to Car. It doesn't answer me. Of course not. Because you're a horrible detective that clearly has no will of his own, so please. It's too far to walk anywhere from Guy, it's just right there. It's just right there. It really is. It's too far to walk anywhere from No, it's not. Just go. Go. 
Abominos. Uh, well. Oh. Okay. Uh. That works. Locked. And I don't think I'll be breaking down this solid oak door. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough, guy. Okay. Hey, there's a light on in there. McCarthy, break down the door. Locked. That's why I said break down the door. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. I can't reach you. <sighs> Die. That doesn't seem to work. Okay, come on. Worth a try. Yeah, you bet it's worth a try. Even in the dank midnight air, her voice carried on the wind like butterflies. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to speak to the head of the house. Of course, sir. I'll knock the main door for you. Thank you, miss. My heart pounded as her voice ricocheted around inside my head. Okay. Uh... Locked. Okay, so, main doors. Back over here. Good. No, McCarthy. McCarthy. This way. Wait. The bushes. Truth be told, I'm not much of a gardener. Okay. I'm pretty sure I saw something labeled. Oh, creepy ivory. I thought it's a creepy guy. Wait, you're not seriously gonna climb that, are it's you? It's too fragile to climb. Okay, good. Just go back over to these doors so she can let you in. Okay. The house was eerie and empty sounding. The young girl looked at me expectantly. Will you be staying with us this evening, sir? I couldn't imagine sleeping in this godforsaken place. But I couldn't imagine leaving this girl behind. I'm not sure yet, miss. Mr. Grosner is in the drawing room. Whenever you're ready, Mr. McCarthy. A glimmer of recognition flashed across her ivory face, but she didn't say anything. Well, my name's Sarah. Sarah Mackenzie. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. McCarthy. I will take you with me, Sarah Mackenzie. Wherever I go, I will take you with me. Okay. That sounds slightly stalkerish, but, you know, I'm not a man, so I really can't... S Orthodox, how you pick up your women, but... The drawing room was cold and desolate despite the embers smoldering in the hearth. A skinny, gaunt man, no older than mid-twenties, stood in vain trying to warm himself by the fire. I assume this to be Grosen. I should introduce myself. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Good evening. Is there something I can help you with? My name's Rick McCarthy. I'm a private investigator working for a potential client. Do you have a moment for a few questions? My client was dead, but solving this one can be very good for business. McCarthy? Yes, I think I saw something about you in the newspaper. Although I neglected to read the article, I'm afraid. What would you like to know? Let's see. How's business? Anything unusual happened in the last few days? Yeah. Okay. Anything unusual happened in the last few days? Hmm. No. I don't think so. In fact, things have been rather quiet of late. The other guests may be able to help you further than I. Oh, there are other people in here? Well, I guess it's kind of a hotel-ish. So... Okay, let's ask how business is. How's business? Well... Business trots on, as business does. There are still a few guests in the hotel. Only Sarah and Victoria are currently permanent residents, though. Victoria? Quite a feisty young woman. Very inquisitive, too. She seems very interested in the history of the estate. She can usually be found in the bar. Pouring herself drinks. Okay, so let's find out Sarah. Sarah? 
Yes, she's actually a new addition to the household. Been here just a few weeks. A backpacker, as I understand it. Or something similar. I offered a free room and board. Plus a small wage. In exchange for our services as a maid and a cook. Alrighty. I think that's all I need, that's to all for I now. need for now. Don't mention it, sir. Will you be staying with us this evening? The weather is quite atrocious. Thank you, but uh, no, I think I've learned everything I can. It seemed very possible that the matchbook was a red herring. I thought it would be wise to come back in the morning with a fresh head and a new set of questions. Uh, why not just... Guy... Let's talk Good night, Mr. McCarthy! Oh, we're leaving. We're not going to go and use other doors. I should go back to my car. I'll come back in the morning. Alright, guy. Have it your way. Leave like the cool guy that you want to be. And all your monologue. Come on. Hmm. Hmm. My car's tires have been slashed. It seems someone is intent on me staying. Perhaps the matchbook was not a red herring after all. Hmm. See, now, there are reasons for this. Seems we have to just mosey back inside. Explain that someone wants me dead. Good night, Mr. McCarthy! <sighs> okay, you know what? Go upstairs. Clearly, there must be I something. can't really wander around the house if I'm not a resident. Hey, aren't you a detective of a sort? I mean, come on. I can't really <sighs> wander around the house if I'm not a resident. Did you do realize that your tires have been slashed? Your tires have been slashed, and we need to talk to somebody about this. Come on, somebody. Okay, you know what? We're gonna talk to you because apparently I will be staying this evening. Oh? Finally. It seems someone has slashed my tires. How awful! <sighs> this is not the first time this has happened, though. I suspect wolves. The idea of wolves tearing at my tires struck me as suspicious. Wolves? Indeed. There has been the odd sighting on the estate over the last few months. I see. Well, at any rate. Please accept lodgings for the night. Or indeed as long as you need. Free of charge. That's very kind of you, Mr. Crowsley. Please, call me Michael. Speak to Sarah, and she will prepare a room for you. Also, feel free to wander the house. With the exception of the West Wing, of course. I'm afraid it's currently closed for a refurbishment. Okay, uh... See, here I am. Thanks, I'll speak to Sarah about my room. Okay, and we will save it here until next time. Alright. Bye!